Why don't you try out for the play, Patty? What for? I'm going to be a brain surgeon. Yeah, it might be a blast. I'm not interested in the Starsville bit. I think actors are real cold cuts. Well, I promised Strassman I'd try out for it. Who's he? He's the guest director this year. He's very big off Broadway. I'll be at lunch. Well, come in and wait while I audition, and, and I'll buy you lunch. You reached me. <laughs> Seek no collar for your going, but bid farewell and go. When you sued staying, then was the time for words. No going, then. Eternity was in our lips and eyes. No, 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 no. You're not ordering a banana split. You are Cleopatra, the greatest queen on earth, bidding farewell to her lover. Shall I try it again, Mr. Strausman? Over Shakespeare's dead body. <laughs> Next. Who's your cousin? These are the words of the immortal bard. He has survived for hundreds of years. Please, please do not plunge him into oblivion this afternoon. I'll try not to, Mr. Strassman. I will appreciate it. England will appreciate it. <laughs> Kathy didn't tell me she was going this route. Maybe she was planning to spring it as a surprise. <sighs> Kathy's in a directed. She's just square enough to think this is some kind of big deal. Hopes Vengali doesn't wipe her out. <laughs> Nay, pray you seek no color for your going, but bid farewell and go. When you sued staying, then was the time for words. No going then. Eternity was in our lips and eyes. Thank you. How was I? I was moved, but not far. Can <laughs> you wait in the wings, please? <laughs> Next! When you sued staying, then was the time for words. No going then. Wrong. Go. <laughs> Next. You. Come on, quickly, quickly. No, no. I'm with him. I didn't come to... Hurry, I haven't got all day. I'm no actor. Then you're an excellent company. Let me see if you can read your mother tongue. <clears throat> Nay, pray you seek no color for your going. But bid farewell and go. When you sued staying, then was the time for words. No going then. Eternity was in our lips and eyes. Bliss in our brows bent. None our parts so poor, but was a race of heaven. They are so still. Or thou, the greatest soldier of the world, art turned the greatest liar. That's what I want. That's it. You are Cleopatra. Me? You're raw, but you have fire. I've never heard a reading just like that. You have a spark that burns with honesty and glows with passion. You are an instrument that I can play upon, a clay that I can model. I never acted before. Oh, good. When I was in Hollywood, I, I directed dozens of... You directed in Hollywood? Well, I was an assistant director, actually, but it's the same thing. I worked with all the great stars. Garbo, Barrymore, Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> what about me? Yeah, what about her? She's the talent in the family. Yes, I'm the talent in the family. Uh, you are sisters? Cousins. Uh, well, you can play Iris and understudy Cleopatra. Understudy? Uh, why don't you let me play Iris and Kathy play Cleopatra? You have captured the essence of one of the most complex characters in the theater. And the thought behind it. You are instinctively a method actor. I can almost see your mind working. Tell me, what was in your mind when you said, no going then, eternity was in our lips? Lunch. <laughs> Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see. Susan, I'm happy to be 
Louisville. It was clip time. I think it's very exciting that you have the lead, Patty. I didn't mean to take it away from you, Kathy. I guess I just swept him away. Well, at least you're playing Iris. Yes. There's no such thing as a small part. Only small actresses. Talent is what counts. Boy, this family's rotten with talent. And I mean rotten. <laughs> Richard's gonna play Anthony. That should deal history a mortal blow. <laughs> this isn't just another play. It's Shakespeare. The greatest genius who ever lived. Very few people can do justice to the immortal bard. <laughs> May I quote you? Martin. That's all right, Mother. Let him make fun of me. All great people have had to struggle against disbelievers. You see, I've been holding her back. She could have been Helen Hayes. <laughs> it just so happens that Mr. Strassman thinks I can be a big movie star. He says I'm a natural. Who's Mr. Strassman? He's the guest director. He used to be an assistant director in Hollywood. An assistant director? <laughs> You'll excuse me, I must rehearse now. In praising Antony, I have dispraised Caesar. I am paid for it now. Lead me from hence. In praising Caesar, I have dispraised Antony. Wow, are we gonna have to live with that? We must be patient, Ross. Patty belongs to the ages now. She might just surprise you, Martin Lane. Just think, when I woke up this morning, that little girl was just my daughter, Patty. Now she's queen of the Nile. <laughs> she had quite a day. You know, I can't make up my mind. About what? What shape swimming pool we should have in Hollywood. <laughs> Our terrene moon is now eclipsed, and it, uh, and it uh, potends along the fall of Anthony. I must stay his time. To flatter Caesar, would you mingle eyes with one who ties his point? Not know me yet. Anthony, you follow her. And remember, bathe the stage in colors. I want to see the reds of passion, the blacks of hatred and the magentas of jealousy. I feel like a rainbow. <laughs> now go on, suffer. Together with my brave Egyptians all, by the discanding of this pelleted storm, lie graveless until the flies and gnats of the Nile shall bury them for prey. Bravo. Well, let our mamas rest a while. Did I suffer enough? I was moved. She sure is great, isn't she? I bet she'd really have a chance in Hollywood. Don't you think so, Mr. Strassman? Hollywood is a city without a gate. It has no entrance. And the walls are so thick that the cries of talented people screaming to get in are unheard by the Philistines inside. What does that mean? It means that motion picture studios don't cover high school plays. <laughs> if you could get them to this one, I bet she'd melt their neons. <laughs> I'll bet Eleonora Dusa never said like hi. Of course not. She was prehistoric. <laughs> well, you all set for the big opening Friday? It's a slide. Well, you sound pretty cool about it. Don't you have any stage fright? Great actors don't get stage fright. Seems to me I read somewhere they did. We don't. <laughs> well, it's nice to get it from the horse's mouth. Dado, working on a newspaper must be a real blast. Well, we're not as glamorous as you show people, but it's a living. It's more than a living. It's life. I mean, when you sit behind your desk, you hold the pulse of the world's heartbeat in your hand. I do. I didn't know you were interested in the world's heartbeat. To develop as an actress, you must develop as a human being. Be interested in all the songs of life. Is that Shakespeare speaking or you? It's me. The real me. <laughs> what is the real you trying to say? Simply that I'd love to come down and see the newspaper sometime. Well, you've been to the office. No, I meant the whole paper. You know, the printing press and everything. I may owe your Mr. Strassman a big fat apology. When would you like to go? Now. <laughs> Hi there. Where in the world have you been? Down at the Chronicle. Ever seen a linotype machine? It's a review of you and Cleopatra. But it hasn't opened yet. <laughs> Listen to this. But Jack, 
I have never seen a young actress with a fire and vibrant personality of Patty Lane. The enclosed review will give you some idea. I recommend that the studio sign her before someone else grabs her. You can see her Friday night bringing her magic fire to Cleopatra at the Brooklyn Heights High School. It's signed Lou. How do you like it? It's great. Who wrote it? I did. <laughs> then, who's Jack and who's Lou? Jack is Jack Warner. And it doesn't matter who Lou is. But won't Jack want to know who Lou is? I'm not sending this letter to Jack Warner. I'm sending it to Dory Sharry with a copy of the review I wrote about me. But doesn't Dory Sharry have his own picture company? Sure. You're writing a letter about you to Jack Warner and you're mailing it to Dory Sharry. Why? I don't get it. I'm afraid I don't either, Patty. It's simple. Hollywood's a city without a gate. You can't just walk in on the Philistines. You have to use some imagination. Ever read about the fall of Troy? They used a wooden horse. Now I get it. She's going to use a wooden actress. <laughs> I don't understand this, Mr. Sherry. The envelope was addressed to you, but the letter is addressed to Jack Warner. It must have been sent here by mistake. Whoever they're talking about certainly seems to be talented. She's a talented con artist. This is the oldest trick in the world. Look, she even had phony reviews printed. Oh, shall I throw it away? No, I like your initiative. Have someone cover the show for us. <laughs> Yet have I fierce affections and think what Venus did with Mars. Oh, Charmian, where thinkest thou he is now? Stands he or sits he or does he walk? Or is he on his horse? Oh, happy horse. Yes. I have to make a move downstage here. This is where Mr. Strassman wants some greens. Oh, you'll have to see a florist. Honestly, Kathy, I don't dig all that way out stuff. I just let go and do what comes naturally. Whatever it is, it's very effective. It's better work Friday night. Oh, happy horse to bear the weight of Antony. Do bravely, horse. Cleo! Mom says to tell you soup's on. I simply cannot work with these constant interruptions. I must be let alone. Do you want me to tell Mom and Dad to move out of the house? <laughs> Nobody appreciates what a terrible strain we artists go through. <laughs> let's eat. Child. All right, let's start from the beginning of scene three. All right. The season eight seat, second row center, put aside for opening night. Oh, but I'm afraid the whole second row's been taken by the faculty, sir. Well, get them back. All the picture studios are asking for tickets. I can't understand it. They say that even Dory Sherry himself might be coming. <laughs> Maybe he's heard of my work. <laughs> hey, where are the girls? Patty's in the kitchen rehearsing. Kathy's cueing her. They gave me a preview. Patty's surprisingly good. Boy, that's a mother's love. <laughs> she has a natural acting talent. No, she gets that from my side of the family, my Uncle Ben. He was a used car salesman. I don't know about your Uncle Ben, but Uncle Dory Sherry's interested in her. He's ordered four tickets for tomorrow's opening. The Dory Sherry? That's right. Somebody wrote to him about Patty. Wonder who that could have been. Martin, what if Patty decides she really wants to be an actress? We'll send her to a good psychiatrist. Patty, would you like some hot chocolate? No, thank you, Mama. I have to watch my figure. Cleopatra didn't. Well, how do you know? She was before your time. I've seen pictures. <laughs> I just came in to say good night to all you dear, sweet people. Well, good night to dear, sweet you. I want to let you know that no matter what happens after tomorrow night, I'll never forget any of you. That's a very comforting thought. And we will never forget you. Are you planning on running away? <laughs> After tomorrow night, you may all be in for a big surprise. But no matter where I go, I'll take you with me. Good night. I bid you fond good night. Dream sweet until tomorrow brings the morning light. I wonder if they could build us a ham-shaped swimming pool. In certain circles, that's called the prima donna bit. <laughs> you know something, Natalie? I really admire her. I mean, she didn't go after that part. They came to her. 
But she's really worked at it. She rehearses night and day. And I think it's begun to broaden her interests. When we went down to the newspaper, she spent the whole afternoon in the composing room. Yeah. Good night, folks. Patty's going to be good tomorrow night. Good? She's going to be a smash. <laughs> Kathy, will you pass me the syrup, please? Good morning, group. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Uncle Martin. Martin. Hey, where's Patty? She's getting dressed. She overslept. Now, there I was, so nervous that I couldn't close my eyes all night, and Patty overslept. <laughs> well, you really have to hand it to her. Most kids would be in a state of panic if they knew Dory Sherry was going to be out front watching tonight. There's our little star. Good morning, darling. Good morning, Patty. Hi, sis. Hi. <laughs> How is Patty? She still can't talk. But there's nothing wrong with her. It's psychosomatic. The influence of the mind or the body. Patty is terrified of opening tonight. But it's just a school play. Well, apparently she has a feeling that a great deal hinges on it. She has a fear of failing. And the easiest way for her not to fail is not to put herself to the test. So her larynx simply refuses to function. Why don't we try putting her in front of a telephone? <laughs> Martin. Oh. There must be something you can do. There's nothing to worry about, Mrs. Lane. This uh, condition will go away the moment her fear goes away. That would be too late. The show opens tonight. I'm so sorry. Why don't you go back to bed? Do you want to go to school? You want to go to school and tell them that you're not going to be in the play? What are you going to say to them? Mara! <laughs> All right, once again, please. Well, there you are. I was getting worried. We can't have anything happen to our leading lady on opening night. Now, I'd like to run through the death scene once more. Get the ass. Do we really have to? What are you whispering for? We can release four seats, Mr. Strassman. I just got the message that the group from Warner Brothers isn't coming. I'm ready to rehearse the death scene, Mr. Strasburg. Well, but Dory Sherry will be here, sir. Like fire. I feel disloyal taking your place, Patty. You should be on that stage tonight. Well, that's show business. There'll be other shows, dear. Sure there will. Gee, I'm sorry about this, kitten. Are you sure you're going to be all right here alone? Dr. Lewis wants you to stay in bed and gargle every hour. We'll be back just as soon as the show's over. Don't worry, Patty. You just relax. Know that I'll be right there, doing the best I know how. I won't be as good as you, of course. But the audience won't be disappointed. I mean, Cleopatra will be on that stage tonight. I want to wish you all the luck in the world. I'm getting my voice back. I can play the part. Oh. You'll see Dory Shari. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we get the show on the road? <laughs> well, Kathy, I just dropped in to tell you not to be nervous. I'm not. Oh. Well, you'll be fine. But just remember, speak up. Ringing tones. Not now to hear thee sing. Not now to hear thee sing. Well, that's the general idea. And remember the colors. I'll try. All right, break a leg. <laughs> break a leg. Not now to hear thee sing. Not now to hear thee sing. Not now to hear thee sing. Oh, hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Castle. No, they're not here. They went to the theater. It's our annual school play. I was supposed to star in the, in the production of Antony and... Cleopatra. Can you hear me? You can? Thank you. Bye. 
Not now to hear these things. of our generals or flows the measure. Those, his goodly eye, would It's a shame Patty had to miss this. But like Kathy's very strong. good, isn't she? She's a real actress. Her father will be delighted. Patty will kill herself. <laughs> Do you really think so? Mean it. Mean it. It's dying. There's no fire. And they say we shall in battle by the second hour in the morning. Where's the queen? That's your cue. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Strassman, but I couldn't help it. I... No, no, but, but over there, you're, you're supposed to enter from over there. Thank you. Oh, no, no, never mind. It's too late now. Go on from here. The queen, my lord, the queen. Oh, my lady, I have news. I stand here. I have news. Speak up and answer my forebodings. I talked to Caesar, O oh Cleopatra. I cannot hear you. I've talked to Caesar, O oh Cleopatra. Come, falter not, but tell me the title. Yes, tell me, where my heart is melted in its own anguished fire. The message I implore you. The message I implore you. And me? The news is evil. He sends so poor an opinion of his wing, which has superfluous kings for messengers. Agrippa has begun to fight. Caesar's will is that I shall be taken alive. Oh, Antony. <laughs> Err, secure for me this message, written in the greatest of secrecy. Go, Eros. Send his treasure after. Detain no jot, I charge thee. Agrippa has begun to fight. Caesar's will is that Antony be taken alive. That is verily what it says. <laughs> Comfort her, my lord. These arms shall await your return. So shall we. I am finished with thee. We with both of thee. I bid you do. Give me my robe and my crown. I have immortal longings in me. in years. <laughs> Why doesn't one of them get off the stage? Which one? Where's the ass? Give me the ass. I was here first. It's my ass. <laughs> Peace. all my fault. I should have gotten off the stage when you came on, Patty. I just got caught up in the part. I'm sorry. It was all my fault. I never should have barged in on you. You were in the middle of a show. Well, you should hear the audience. We're a smash. It's the best comedy I ever directed. I want to thank you for one of the most enjoyable evenings I've had in years. Oh, uh, my name is Ryan. I'm a talent scout for 20th Century Fox. Uh, you were excellent, young lady. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Uh, but you, <laughs> you were sensational. Her name's Patty Lane, L-A-N-E. She's my sister. She's our daughter. Oh, well, you must be very proud. I think you've got a movie star on your hands. Uh, we have a picture coming up with a part that's perfect for you. Uh, you can come in tomorrow with your mother and father and discuss contracts. What do you say to that, Patty Lane? Or... <laughs>
here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. 